Blessed be God, the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to live, to love as God loves. Amen. New light is streaming Now is the darkness vanished away See in this space Our fears and dark dreamings Brought here to you In the light of the day Gather us in Lost and forsaken Gather us in Blind and the lame to us now, and we shall awake, and we shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old, we yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light. To the poor human race Gather us in The rich and the hearty Gather us in The proud and the strong Give us a heart So meek and so lowly Give us the courage To enter the sun grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Lord, whose loving, humble service or the weight of human need who upon the cross forsaken work your mercies perfect deed we your servants bring the worship not a voice alone but heart consecrating to your purpose Every gift which you impart Still your children wander homeless Still the hungry cry for bread Still the captives long for freedom Still in grief we mourn our death as you, Lord, in deep compassion Heal the sick and free the soul By your Spirit send your power To our world to make it whole As we worship, grant us vision Till your love's revealing light In its height and depth and greatness Dawns upon our quickened sight Making known the deeds and burdens Your compassion bids us bear Stirring us to ardent service Your abundant life to share Called by worship to your service Forth in your dear name we go To the child, the youth, the aged Loving, living deeds to show Hope and health, good will and comfort, counsel, aid and peace we give. That your servants, Lord, in freedom, may your mercy flow and live. Let us pray. O oh God, rich in mercy, you look with compassion on this troubled world. Feed us with your grace and grant us the treasure that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Amos. Alas for those who are at ease in Zion, and for those who feel secure on Mount Samaria. Alas for those who lie on beds of ivory, who lounge on their couches, and eat lambs from the flock, and calves from the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp, and like David, improvise on instruments of music, who drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore they shall now be the first to go into exile, and the revelry of the loungers shall pass away. The Word of the Lord. Psalm 113. Hallelujah. Give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed, from this time forth for forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, God's glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who sits enthroned on high, but stoops to behold the heavens and the earth? The Lord takes up the weak out of the dust, and lifts the poor from the ashes, enthroning them with the rulers, 
with the rulers of the people. The Lord makes the woman of a childless house to be a joyful mother of children. Hallelujah. The second reading is from Timothy. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world, so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation, and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith, and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life, to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Jesus Christ, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ which you will bring about at the right time. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. The Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 16th chapter. Lord, Lord. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony of the flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in life excuse me, in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. So how many times do we walk right past someone who maybe isn't like us? We go to Chicago and see street people all the time, and even in, he, in our area of Kankakee and Bradley, there are homeless people on the street, and we keep moving. They are covered with newspapers or dirty blankets or coats. Their clothes are tattered and dirty and oftentimes they smell of alcohol and cigarettes and we keep walking. We mumble to ourselves that it's their own fault they are on the streets. They did drugs, they drank too much, they are mentally ill and the excuses pile up and we keep walking. 
If I give them money, they will waste it on something. If I offer them a card where they can get some help, they toss it to the side. And why, we wonder, why are they here? What got them to this point? We build fences between us and them. We dare, we dare them to cross over. So well, today, here is Lazarus outside the gate, begging for water and healing, just like in the gospel story. It all comes down to money, doesn't it? We talk about it, worry about it, ignore it, even, the dream, even have dreams and nightmares about it. We wonder how best to use it and imagine all the things we'd do if we had more. We ponder these questions as individuals and families and churches and businesses. We are all well off in one way or another. We have a home, we have food, we have each other if we need anything. And not everyone is so fortunate. The readings this week remind us that this is not a new divide between those who have and those who have not. I'm torn between being thankful for this reminder and feeling exhausting that nothing really has changed, seemingly and forever. In Jesus' parable, the gate alongside which Lazarus lies is also a stop sign gate. It signals to Lazarus and everyone else that they really are not welcome. Keep out, the gate says. Don't bother the rich man or his way of life. He'd rather remain separated from you. And the gate seems to serve only that purpose, and eventually it turns into a, to the detriment of both Lazarus and the rich man. We all know Lazarus. He is our neighbor. We are the ones who are fed, clothed, and have a place to lay our head. We aren't rich, but we aren't Lazarus either. Lazarus would be glad to change places with us. The idea that the rich man is a good man is directly challenged by Jesus' parables. And the rich man, who is not named here, overlooks Lazarus, who sits with his sword at his gate every day. The fact that the poor man is named and the rich man is not is an interesting reversal. But the rich man and his actions are still the focal point of the story. Humanizing Lazarus with a name draws more attention to the inhumane way he is treated by the rich man. The text does not say if the rich man's cruelty towards Lazarus is intent, excuse me, intentional or not. Neither is particularly defensible. It was part of the role of the wealthy in the ancient world to provide alms for the poor in the community even if it was largely self-serving. Self patronage was an expected means for some of the poor to be fed while the wealthy reinforced their status with virtuous actions. Often there was a bench outside of the homes where the poor could wait for assistance. A beggar who sat on this bench at the gate could expect some sort of attention, especially from a feasting host and guests. And as one verse says, this particular rich man feasted every day, meaning Lazarus was denied many times as the rich man repeatedly ignored, repeatedly ignored the unwritten code of honor. Furthermore, verse 21 makes it clear that Lazarus is not asking for much. Scraps and leftovers from this sumptuous feasting would have made all the difference for him. Those waiting benches are still present in the excavated sites outside the large homes of the wealthy, a reminder of the established practice and the rich man's neglect. The interruption of, of wealth and virtue gets particular, particularly visit, vivid in the next verse as the parable states directly that the rich man has gone to Hades after his death. And this is contrasted with Lazarus, who has gone to be with Abraham. The dynamics of power now come into fo focus. During Lazarus' lifetime, the rich man's power was absolute and unquestioned. He had authority. In exchange, he was supposed to play a role, which he did not fulfill. Now his power is gone. 
But this text focuses elsewhere on the authority and the power that are given to each of us, if not in equal measure. The parable serves to refocus the hearer on what we do and what we have, how our vocations serve our neighbors. Virtue is not determined by wealth, by the type of employment, by gender, immigration, status, or body type. Virtue is born out of deeds. These days, we especially find ourselves worried about money. The markets, which I don't understand, just seem to have all the power in the world. One little negative report and they fall off the charts. Health coverage is out of reach for a lot of the average people in our world. I always say that the rich companies can get richer on the backs of the poor. People sit on the outside of health care in hopes of getting care and medicine they need, and the rich walk on by. Professional athletes are paid so much, and homeless people sleep outside the parks. Think of the people at the beginning of the war in Ukraine who couldn't get any food and desperately needed their food because the ports were closed. Think of people right here in our communities who work, and yet at this time of high prices, can't afford food or medicine. This pastor tells a story of when she was in college and she had studied abroad in a country where social and economic disparities were more immediately visible than what she had experienced living in the United States. The family she stayed with could be considered middle class, living in a relatively nice apartment that never lacked running water, food, or amenities that provided comfort and entertainment. But just minutes from the, apart of the apartment, she would encounter people begging on the streets for anything to help them and their families make it another day. She said she wanted to help, but doing so seemed so overwhelming as she considered the matter so what she did, what she did was would do a little to ultimately alleviate so many people's suffering. So she tells the story, she, as she walked by these people, she noticed a young lady rummaging in a trash container. Then she noticed one young girl in particular who had regularly saw digging in the dumpster for food. And she passed by her so many times without ever interacting with her. And perhaps a sign of numbness to the suffering that had been a backdrop to her daily life. But eventually, she said, I started to see the girl in such a way that I could no longer ignore her immediate needs and began bringing food to share with her. Even if I could not change her larger life circumstances, I could do something. The stark contrasts I witnessed abroad taught me to see my country differently, including the inequities and suffering that is perhaps less visible, but should not therefore be ignored. So who are the Lazaruses we see in our lives? The people we see outside the, of our gates of our well-to-do places. Like you, I always have good intentions to step out of my comfort zone, and yet most of the times I fail. Even if the rich man did see Lazarus at the gate, he did not truly recognize this man as Christ, someone who was part of the kingdom. He walked right on past Lazarus, hoping someone else would open the gate. We can't fix it all, but God calls us in this time and place to see that one person that we can share God's love and that they may see the world a little better because of you and your faith in a loving God. Amen. Now may the peace of God who passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, like 
for the world to see. Christ, we are light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, we are light, shine in your church, gathered today. Our world is troubled, longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us, make us your living word. Christ, be our light, shine in the hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church. Today. Longing for food, many are hungry. Longing for water, many still thirst. Make us your bread, broken for others, shared until all are fed. Christ be our life. Shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gathered today. Longing for shelter, many are homeless. Longing for warmth, many are cold. Make us your building, sheltering others, walls made of living stone. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gathered today. Many the gifts, many the people, many the hearts that yearn to belong. Let us be servants to one another, making your kingdom come. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light. Shine in your church, gather today. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive God's blessing. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. A 
soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all the tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame And to those who would for you yearn You will show your might, put the strong to fly For the world is about to turn My heart shall sing of the day you bring Let the fires of your justice burn Wipe away all the tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king beware for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. This hungry poor shall weep no more for the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. All the tears for the dawn draws near The world is about to turn Though the nations rage from age to age We remember who holds us fast God's mercy must deliver us From the conqueror's crushing grasp this saving word that our forebears heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all the tears for the dawn draws near And the world is about to turn